everybody. Today is December 6th, and this is the KCP community meeting. Uh, if we, we don't have an agenda for today, so if you've got anything that you'd like to discuss, please feel free to use the raise hand feature in Google Meet, and, uh, and I'll moderate. I did want to start uh, just by talking about the 0 0.10 release. We are hoping to try and cut it this week. The tentative date is Thursday although um, we may do it sooner or later, depending on closing out the milestone. So um, I was thinking I could start by just running through what's in the milestone, and uh, that'll give you all some time to think about uh, if you've got stuff you wanted to chat about. So let me just pull this up real quick and screen share. OK, so um, I am going to start at the, and we'll start at the top. Uh, so we have reverse permission claims. And I know Sergius wasn't able to attend the meeting due to a conflict. But we do have um, one PR, I think, that's remaining, or the PR. Uh, so I believe that there was. Um, an update from him overnight, at least overnight for me. So I'm going to take a look at that PR later today. So I think we're in good shape um, for this particular one. Next up is compute type management. And um, so it looks like this got merged, David. Um, yes. So I think we can close this. Yes, I think so. There, there are some planned follow-ups uh, to change a bit how things, you know, are implemented. But but I think they can be pushed to another AP core, just you know, individual follow-up issues. But the the main feature is there, so I don't. I think we can we can see. Okay. Um, please feel free to take initiative and you know close things out when they're ready. Uh, so yeah, sure. that's awesome that this is done. All righty. Next up, we have Steve and tooling to automatically migrate. I think I missed this one yesterday. I moved the other one into 0 0.11 because I figured this wasn't a milestone blocker, right? Yeah, this is the blocker. OK. Uh, this one um, around the CRUD operations issue there is a PR open for this, and Sergius is going to review it, and that's this 2385. So moving on to deployment splitter, David, my really my only question, given that this is over 1,200 lines of new code with no reviews yet, uh, is this something that we think we can review and get merged this week, or and is it required for 0 0.10? Well, the thing is, it's quite old. In fact, um, it's it's mainly just a, uh, an additional controller, which is not part of the main uh, KCP, which, which is just optional, and which is which is based on things already merged. So, I mean, it's it's been in review for some time. In fact, I think uh, it's code that was already agreed upon, but. No, it's not critical. It's just a pity that that it's not merged, um, but it's not critical. Uh, you know, features yes. for zero dot ten. I mean, so. So I've I, been I requesting a review for this this one <laughs> since some time, but you know, obviously other priorities uh, came into play. I think. So, okay. Does anybody have time to review this? Yeah, it's it's mainly just a, you know the first coordination controller based on all the on the helpers and and you know the coordination controller and the, and the um, sinker views that I showed uh, last week. So those the helpers and and the main mechanism is is merged and this one is you know bringing back the deployment splitters splitter based on on that. So you know. It's not critical. It's just uh, okay. I I would prefer that this get 
reviewed and I, I realize code got moved around. That's that's cool. Um, so if I can find some time, I'll try and take a look. Stefan, if you've got time, I know you probably don't. <laughs> um, if anybody else does, um, but I, I don't want to just uh, slap this in without a review. So we will try to get to it. Um, next up is the this combo of updating DNS resources. Uh, David, what's the review status on this one? Uh, uh, I've I've reviewed already. I want uh, and. Lionel tested that as well on on his side. Uh, I just wanted to to do a last path, and then we should be good. Okay, thank you. So we'll keep it in the milestone. Yeah, uh, sure. Um, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, this, this must... is just the issue for that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so the last one to discuss then is this new PR. Uh, Yes, I just did this one because I've been working uh, recently on cleaning the core DNS uh, resources when when no resource from for a given upstream uh, workspace exists anymore. But obviously, this will split to zero point eleven. But while while doing that, uh, I just realized that uh, there was some, you know, okay. Uh, well, let's get this reviewed, and it's it's this is small, so it's cool to leave. Yeah, this is quite small. Just you know, missing return or stuff like that that I just saw in the code. Okay, so I think there's um, there's not all that much left, which is awesome. So if folks want to and have um, review time, there are four open PRs. So. Feel free to, to come in if you are interested. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do the release later this week. OK. Um, so Stefan, do you want to chat just a little bit about what's to come after 0 0.10 with the workspace refactor, just to give a bit of an overview? Yes, I can do that, thinking what the best way is. Um, so we have a branch in, it's actually here in KCP called main minus something, if you can go there. Go to where, sorry? Two branch, branches, one of those. And yeah, the rebase one, that one, yeah, and that one. And we actually have a follow up of that. And this is basically like a feature branch and you see the number of commits pretty massive. What we are doing, and we talked about it before, we are changing how authorization works, how um, lots of controllers check for what a workspace actually is. Like they look into the workspace, and there's a new object called this workspace at the moment, and we will likely rename that again to Logical Cluster as we have planned uh, originally. And lots of controllers are touched in here. To, to look on this object inside of the workspace. No lookup anymore into the parent. And um, the change is massive because basically every controller is touched and every controller uh, gets a new informer and or at least the, the old workspace informer is replaced by the, this workspace informer. Um, we have inverted how workspace and cluster workspace relate so the real object in this branch is a workspace cluster workspace is still there but just um, to get us um, over the line in end-to-end -end tests so we will remove the projection of cluster workspaces uh, when we have moved everything to workspaces so it's much simpler there is no airbag based filtering anymore so this whole part goes away what else um, one goal was to decouple the hierarchy, like this root colon something, something, something from um, the actual logical cluster concept. So we will, with this branch, we will have more than one root workspace. Or root workspace is the wrong word. So the root workspace is a root, right? It's a root of a hierarchy. That's why it's called root. 
but there will be more hierarchies, more um, trees, if you want. So, for example, your home workspace. So you mean it will be a forest? It changes from a, a tree to a forest. Yes, exactly. And you could even run it without any hierarchy. So um, API bindings and exports will work without that. But if you if you have the tenancy API group enabled, you have a forest. That's the point. So home workspaces will live in their, home, their own subtree, basically, in this forest. And also an organization, for example, could also be a subtree. Um, or we can have multiple root workspaces, replicas of that. So much, much more flexible. And um, the last thing which we do to make this work, we um, so we, we change what a logical cluster is. So today we, we check for root and we check for system colon. So there are just a few prefixes which are allowed. In the future, there can be basically every, we call it a cluster name. So a workspace has an etcd key. Everybody knows that. So there are those keys in etcd, the prefixes basically. And we put, we have put in the past the higher key paths like root colon, workspace, Colon through something like that we have put into the etcd um, uh, prefix. What we do now in this branch is basically adding another concept, which is probably just a random base uh, 36 uh, ID, um, which is distinct from the, from the path in the hierarchy. So workspaces will get something called a cluster ID or cluster name. That's the thing that uh, Andy is uh, highlighting here. So this ID can be used in logical cluster path to go down into sub workspaces. So you can take the ID of your home workspace, which is some random number, random character combination, and then say colon um, sub workspace. And this is a valid logical cluster string as well. So they are much more flexible. And um, by, by doing that, uh, in the future, we can do things like uh, moving workspaces in the hierarchy somewhere else. And this identity, this cluster name, will not change when you do this operation because the hierarchy path and this is, is, um, uh, is distinct. It's a different thing. Steve, you, OK, you just pasted an example. If you can go there. Yeah, there, there are examples. So there are different ways to address one workspace. Um, higher level, meta level, um, this branch is breaking. So disruptive in the sense that the APIs change, like cluster workspace basically goes away. It's still there as a projection, but workspace is a real thing. API bindings will only reference those new cluster IDs, cluster names. That's a, that's a change, which is breaking. Um, this, this workspace, obviously, that's a new thing. It wouldn't be breaking um, the airbag logic, the authorization logic changes, because now we look into the workspace. So you don't create anything outside of it anymore. So there are a couple of things which will change. So um, the CLI is mostly compatible, but I, I also think we need a new version for that. Um, maybe a last word before I finish. The, the motivation of that is sharding. So if we want to horizontally scale, it's bad to look into the parent. That's basically the, the whole reason why we do all of that. So this branch will change that. It will allow us to operate workspaces when everything else of the KCP uh, system is down. You basically just need a point proxy and one shard, and then this shard can serve all the workspaces. That's the goal. So it's important. Um, there's basically no way around such a change. And we combine a couple of things here because we are breaking anyway. So of course, uh, we fix things we had planned because we have to wipe etcd for example if you're running etcd uh, deployment with kcp the data must be wiped yeah that's a summary thanks Stefan. um and so i, I would add once 0 0.10 is released the main branch is basically going to be on hold while 
Stefan and Lukash and others uh, finalize this feature branch. We'll get the feature branch merged, main will open back up, and then there will be probably numerous follow-ups to uh, you know, fix whatever sort of ripple effects that we didn't catch in the uh, in the initial merges. I was gonna say, do we, so is the timeline this week for the release, next week for the branch, what's the? If we can get 010 this week, that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. And then when Stefan and Lukash are ready <laughs> for, uh, the branch, so like we could, we could accept some PRs to come in, but they would need to be probably um, reviewed just at a high level uh, to make sure that they don't have a major rebase impact for the feature branch. Yeah, I guess I was mostly just hoping to get like Stefan's opinion on how if like a week we're looking if that's a reasonable time frame. Yeah, I think we guess a reasonable time frame. So it's compiling, it's starting up. Um, we haven't done a last step. So we have to replace a couple of libraries or bump them to the next version. Dodge clusters, the machinery, the clients. We are integrating that right now. And we have to do another um, walk through all the end-to-end -end tests and fix them. So we had some green. Everything was green already, but we have we hadn't done the cluster ID separation yet. That's the next step and yeah, maybe a week. All right. Thank you. Uh, so I'll open up the floor now. Anybody have anything you want to chat about? Paul, go ahead. Yes, so a couple of weeks ago, we merged uh, the enhancement for process improvements, and we're going to need some owners for those going into the, the first of the year. So there are a couple little timelines in there that were just suggested, and that was that we could have an enhancement proposal process in Q1, and that we would do the initial level, level of effort analysis on splitting workloads from control plane um, in Q1 with an eye to execute on it in Q2. So we're looking for some owners for both of those pieces, uh, anyone who might be able to help out. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Paul. Um, so yes, uh, <laughs> plus one. Um, we would love folks to volunteer to help out. So. Uh, you know how to reach out if you're interested. We're on Slack. We're uh, we have the KCP Dev Google group. There's um, GitHub discussions and issues. So any any way of the any one of those is valid for for reaching out. Uh, Lionel, go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, what are the requirements to become a reviewer? Is there any to become a reviewer? That's a good question. Um, so anybody can review anything. Um, the uh, we follow the same two-step process that you may be familiar with in Kubernetes, where anybody who's an organization member in GitHub can LGTM, and only certain people can approve. And you need both an LGTM and an approval to have a PR merge. So um, if you are interested in having more reviews sent your way for a certain package or portion of the repository um, certainly start you know looking at prs that that touch those areas and reviewing them and then uh, at some point you are more than welcome to open up a pr to add yourself as a reviewer to any of the owner's files and if there's an owner's file in a directory that or if there's a directory that doesn't have an owner's file and you would like to be considered a reviewer there, you're more than welcome to create an owner's file in that directory and add yourself as a reviewer. Uh, if that's not spelled out in our contributing documentation, we probably should make sure that it is. Uh, we had something about it, but maybe we don't. 
Um, yeah, we talk about the owners, but oh yeah, we do have this. Um, so if if this text is not sufficient, let's um, maybe chat offline and see if we need to make any changes here. But um, we strongly welcome and encourage anybody to review everything. <laughs> it's a good way to get familiar with different areas of code. And um, the more you review, uh, the more you contribute, eventually you can become an approver. Uh, Paul or Stefan or anybody else want to add anything? Just thumbs up. Thumbs up from Paul. Awesome. There you OK. Um, Right. So again, uh, just call for help if anybody is interested. And uh, anything else on this topic, Paul? Uh, I guess the only th other thing I'll mention is that we're not looking for someone to create something from scratch. There's many enhancement processes that you guys have already used, um, uh, guys and gals have already used. So using some of that prior art to bootstrap us, I think, is what we would be looking for on that one. Um, I suspect that folks that work in the workloads project the most are, are going to be the folks that are most able to to work on the split of it. So yeah, you're already familiar with that side of the project. But if you've written enhancements for any other open source community, then you've got what you need to help us create the same process. And we do. I I took the minimal step of creating. Um, so put it in here somewhere. Uh, I did create the enhancements repository, which is basically blank. Um, it, it has the boilerplate templates in here, but uh, the remaining work for moving this file from the KCP repo to the enhancements repo and, um, and the other things in here have not been done yet. So that's what we're looking for help on. All right. Um, I did want to welcome a new member to the community. We've got Vince, who started yesterday on the team here at Red Hat. So Vince, welcome. Uh, happy to have you on board. And uh, Vince comes to us from working on Cluster API and other community efforts. So uh, if you see him opening PRs and getting involved, uh, we're super happy to have him here. So please say hi when you get a chance. And Vince, if you uh, Wanted to say anything, feel free. Uh, don't want to put you on the spot, though. So, um. oh, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited to be here. Uh, this project has been on my radar for a while. And uh, I can say that, like, from the outside, like, a, a, like Cluster API community was super excited to just like look into KCP. So, I'm happy to contribute. And uh, if you have any tips or things to get started, like, feel free to reach out. I'm on Slack. Um, Thanks, Vince. Uh, any other comments on the enhancements um, before we go on to other topics or look at the um, issue triage? No? OK. So I think I opened the board. There we go. So we have um, just three new issues that have come in in the past week. So the first one uh, was about creating too much stuff in our universal workspace. So uh, backlog, I'm guessing, on this one, Steve? Yep, OK. And the DDSIF manually managing informers, I think, can also be backlog, unless you want to or you started working on this, but it didn't pass because of the indexing, right? Like adding indexers on the or yeah, adding informers and indexers on the fly. Yes. This is blocked so, on the rebase. So all right, back along that. And I filed this one because it it seemed like we probably would want the loopback client to support protobuf and json both. Um, Stefan, is there any reason not to do this? The background here is we explicitly set the loopback client to use proto. And then we had this 
enable multi-cluster round tripper from 16 or 17 million years ago that explicitly set it to JSON, like one line below. So we never actually used proto for anything. I mean, the, the proto setting was yeah. a copy from the upstream like API server bits. So yes. it was copy the upstream setup, and then we happened to inject the multi-cluster round tripper, which happened to set JSON and magically make everything work. So uh, the thing is I that like to do both. Um, if I remember correctly, um, I might be wrong because it's quite long ago, but um, setting things at, um, to JSON was also related to, wasn't it related to? It was CRD storage. Anything that's served from yeah. CRD storage can't be. Exactly. Yeah, the fact that. Um... And so even the namespaces and stuff that we have, like the cube native APIs are served as CRDs, right? So I think we basically can't do proto. Well, no, namespaces are served native. Are they? No, 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 the deployments. I mean, all, all the all the um, standard objects, uh, like deployments and the others, they are expected on the, the client side uh, to be native types uh, in Kube, in kubectl, for example. Though, in fact, they are served from CRDs. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's not related to that. But all the maybe all, it should be all the built-in types, namespaces, config maps, secrets, and so on. Those are all stored in Proto. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm speaking of the others. Yes, but anyways, uh, I think we should try setting except content types to Proto and JSON and see what happens. Because it should improve performance at yeah. scale for built-in types. Yeah, anyway, it, it was related to some limitations uh, on the very early prototype of KCP. So probably, okay. possibly this changed now. Well, I think it probably was just, there's two fields. There's one that only uses a single value. So if you set it to proto, it breaks CRDs. And then there's another one which takes multiple values, which we aren't using right now. So. Yeah, OK, it's related to negotiation. For Alrighty, so that's all the new issues for triage. Um, last call for topics. Paul. I had a thought that uh, it might be fun to end the year on uh, next community call with maybe just an issue of statement that say things like, in 2023, KCP should, or we'd be crazy if we don't type of thing to help us kind of see where people are thinking about KCP and it, its future of the next year, where they would advocate for change um, and have something in 2023 to actually look back on and say, where did we go? Curious if folks like that idea or, or think it's silly. I think that sounds cool. Maybe we start a discussion in GitHub now and let folks fill it in um over the next week and then we can take a look at it at the next meeting cool. uh and speaking of end of the year um the next next week would be the 13th and then the following would be the 20th which is creeping up on the holidays do we want to just say that next week is our last meeting of the year or do we want to try and do one on the 20th as well I'm fine with next week being it. Me too. Yeah, makes sense. OK, so we'll plan on next week being the last meeting of the year. Paul, since you had the idea, do you want to create that discussion in GitHub? Yep, sure. Awesome. Thanks. All right, well, uh, not hearing anything else. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, everybody, and see you in a week. Yeah. Take care. See you. Thank you.